Screencasting isn't just for computer tutorials anymore. It's a whole new form of communications. In part one, I talked about how screencasting can be applied to concept workers, how we can enhance our personal brand with it, reinvent ourselves, and even productize our knowledge with screencasting. In part two, I want to take a look at how businesses can get the most from screencasting software. Let's take a look at three key areas for businesses, external and internal communications, and then training. Most companies don't have internal video teams. Let's face it, creating video is expensive. That means we have to get creative, and we can get creative with screencasting software. Customer care is a prime group for screencasts. Customers don't want to call for support. Besides, it's too expensive for you. That's why it's being outsourced overseas. Ideally, you'd provide support so they wouldn't have to call in the first place. Lars Highland refers to this as know how versus know now. Now, I'm not advocating against care. I'm saying to create tutorials to provide a consistent, self-directed care experience. Clone the best reps message, provide some direction, and enable more self-service. This is a great technique to transform your customers into influencers, into evangelists, and into cheerleaders. Now, customer care is after the sale. But what about before the sale? How can we leverage screencasting before the sale? Well, companies like Barnes & Noble, Charles Schwab, and Sony have created branded e-learning around investment training or their digital lifestyle. As Brian Clark from Copyblogger says, teaching sells because it builds trust and establishes you as an authority. Research by Next Century Media surveyed 200,000 people and found that 90% of them who viewed the brand, who viewed the training, viewed the brand more favorably, and a third were more likely to purchase after watching it. They call this the gratitude effect. But this isn't just for conglomerates either. Small companies can leverage the simplicity of screencasting to create value-packed content that expands their market. Not just a how-to on their product, but rather an educational piece that expands the market for all players. And whatever you do, don't make this a blatant commercial. Truly help people. Then leverage this content in your social media marketing. Broadcast it. Ask for feedback and incorporate the feedback into more tutorials. So let me ask you, how are you currently creating performance support solutions for your customers? How can branded e-learning educate your future customers? And what type of content do you need to convert your customers into evangelists? Just like screencasts can be used for customer-facing communications, it can be just as powerful internally. Screencasting makes it easy to create and distribute executive briefings from PowerPoint and keynote presentations. Now, I encourage you to use this to tell a story, to connect with your employees, and to lead. Whatever you do, don't use bullet points. If you want to give great presentations, get these books. Slideology by Nancy Duarte, Presentation Zen by Gar Reynolds, and Beyond Bullet Points by Cliff Atkinson. Learn to tell a story that establishes an emotional connection with your team. Learn to inspire. Another internal area that's often overlooked is what I like to call tribal knowledge. In the old days, knowledge was passed from tribe elders to the younger members around campfires through storytelling. We used to have an apprentice program. Now, with our aging and dispersed workforces, it's necessary to capture best practices, the corporate DNA, and then to use this in virtual mentoring programs. In fact, and I wish I could find the report, it's been said that these types of videos are more effective because they're raw, unscripted, and they use real people. They're like internal documentaries. 
It's what Jay Cross refers to as informal learning. People aren't learning in classrooms. They're learning on the job. They're learning in the field and they're learning from one another. So I encourage you to take a flip video camera into the field. Incorporate that video into keynote presentations narrated by experts. Tell a digital story. So let me ask you, what's your current communication strategy? And what's your internal level of trust? How are you capturing your tribal knowledge? Are you even prepared for mass departures? And how can you foster informal and social learning in your organization? The elephant in the room is training. How can screencasting be used for training? The days of the big training departments are over. Josh Burson said during the Future of the Business of Learning seminar in the summer of 2009 that people want less e-learning. They want more relevancy. They want less off-the-shelf training and more deeper specialized content. They don't want a generalist instructional designer teaching them. They want to learn from the expert and they want to learn in a YouTube kind of way. You see, employees don't care about instructional design. They don't care about tests. And they definitely don't care about your LMS. We're moving from event-driven training to real-time support. As training professionals, we need to consider how our customers want to consume our training. Training departments are under pressure to do more with less. And the requests just keep coming in. We have to compress the development cycle. The way to do this is to empower subject matter experts throughout the organization. The old way was to have an instructional designer pull everything out of the SME's head by asking a ton of analysis questions. Then they'd organize it, add some objectives and exercises, and make it look pretty. But the problem is the instructional designer isn't the expert. When things change, guess what? They have to go back to the subject matter expert. In a world of specialized knowledge, this model is inefficient. Instead, I suggest empowering SMEs throughout your organization. Leverage crowdsourcing concepts to have the training created from the front lines. Now, I'm not saying this doesn't require structure and guidance. It does. You need to consider how these are vetted for accuracy and what storage and non what storage and knowledge management strategies you need to put in place. But screencasting empowers subject matter experts to quickly create highly specialized videos. So rather than a training organization injecting themselves into the middle of the process, they can facilitate internal crowdsourcing. Train your employees to be better communicators and empower them with tools that broadcast and educate their message. So the question is, how can training departments provide solutions with their budgets being slashed? How much money can your organization save? And by moving training to the front lines, how much faster can your organization produce solutions? Screencasting can enhance external communications in care and marketing. It allows internal communications to be rapid, raw, and reflective. And finally, it has the potential to be perceived as a compliment or really a threat to training departments. As we've seen in the past two presentations, be it for individuals or businesses, screencasting really is a whole new form of communications and can contribute a lot more than just simple computer tutorials. I'm Scott Skybell. Thanks for watching.